it doesn't really make any oh it looks Hello, welcome to a very cold, wet and windy cars and custard video. Um, I know it's been five months, but life has got in the way of this whole YouTube thing. Um, so accept my apology and let's move on. Um, this is my new daily driver. I say new, I've had it for three months. This is 2009 Saab 93 Aero Sport Wagon. It is a two litre turbo, four cylinder engine, petrol. Um, they did two other variants of these engine wise um, they did a twin turbo diesel also known as the 1.9 TTID um, I didn't really want another diesel we've had a few diesels now and they're all going wrong including the BMW X3 um, that I had and I featured in a previous video I've still got the car it's outside um, but it's just too much hassle for me now so I like petrols um, and then they did a 2.8 turbo petrol V6 but a lot of those are either high tax band um, or they're a bit rubbish um, and I'm told actually they don't feel that much quicker than these um, whilst being worse on fuel. So this was my uh, educated decision to have the 2 litre turbo and to be honest uh, it just came about. Um, it's in a group that I'm in on Facebook called Jeff Buys Cars, the group I believe or the selling group, something like that. And yeah, this popped up and it's black on black, it's an estate, it's performance derived, I guess you could say. And yeah, I just fancied it, so I bought it. It was £1,400, I've spent £1,400 on it. Um, I've had the clutch uprated um, because it was starting to slip on the first night. Um, I've also had front brakes done. And yeah, since then it's been fantastic. Um, to be honest, it is a little bit boring, but it does the job. It's got a big boot, it's very comfortable, it's very fast, it's good on fuel and it's cheap to run and that's all you can want from a daily driver or at least a stopgap daily driver like I intended for this to be. So uh, what I'll do is I'll show you around, I'll grab the, the GoPro and uh, yeah we can have a look around the car and then we can go for a little drive after I've put some bits in the back um, to take home. So yeah, join me. I'll give you a quick walk around uh, and I am absolutely freezing so sorry if I'm a little bit shaky but it's got the updated front end I believe this was available from 2007 onwards some people call it the Griffin though they did do a later version which is the true Griffin front end um, though I'm not a fan of the later ones because this all got a little bit funky um, and I think it looks perfect as it is so yeah but it's all very clean this is actually um for a budget car um the paintwork is in excellent condition i know it's absolutely filthy at the moment these wheels have just been refurbished um they're like kind of audi rs6 style from the same era i suppose you could say um they've just been refurbished and they're in quite good order though i'd like some smaller wheels to be honest these are very rare they're called tiger claws um, and they're a genuine oem accessory i like the silver trim strip above all the windows quite aggressive side skirts as well inside have the most comfortable seats in the world i absolutely adore these i wish i could take them out and put them in every car of mine um whilst you're in here you also have fucking neil the best cup holder in the world and it feels like it could do this for god knows how long whereas most bmws would feel like they're gonna fall apart you've got a key in the center um trying to think what else you've got I mean, the rest of it's all kind of fairly logical and well thought out, to be honest. Um, you've got airbags everywhere. Oh, you also have, whilst I remember, I'll just sit on the sill. In here, I'm not sure whether you can see the little hole at the back there, but it has an air conditioned glove box, which is designed to keep chocolate cool in Sweden, in Sweden, I believe. Um, though I use it to keep drinks cool. Now the sun's come out, you can kind of get a better, a better idea for it, but yeah it's very nice as i say it's filthy because i've been daily driving it and kind of living out of it um as you can tell in the back um got all the seats folded because i've got to move some stuff out but if you put them back up you can see that they're very solid very well padded um they're nice and comfortable leg room's good as well i've got that all pushed most of the way back so it's not a true representation of it but yeah um lots of room in the boot when got seats down especially uh, this has got tints which I don't really like and I'll come on to that now because you cannot really see much from inside the car but when I open this boot now this here is the annoying thing so I shut this boot 
when it was this parcel shelf was down here like a normal parcel shelf but it has this option to go up here and what that means is this is all i can see from the rearview mirror and then anybody looking in can just see the rest of this so i don't really understand that um but it just makes seeing things very awkward so it's, it's meant to go into that position there um but it just has a habit of going up like that which is a nightmare anyway let's put that off um because i've got to load this all up with my bits but yeah it's it's quite a big boot i've got this boot liner in here and um, i love these although things do tend to slide around if they're empty but it kind of contains things if there's a lot of stuff but it's all very well laid out um good grab handles as well um i know a lot of cars don't really have very good ones but this has got two and they're good uh, good old things Anyway, aero badging. Um, this is much better than having any M badge on the back of your car or AMG badge. Um, because an M badge is an invitation for chavs to start trying to race you. This is for those in the know. Um, and for those not in the know, they just think it's a chocolate bar. We have these big 335D style exhaust tips, um, which I really quite like. Um, they are Hirsch tips. I believe it's got a full Hirsch exhaust, to be honest. Um, and Hirsch is a tuning performance kind of company that made parts for Saabs. Um, so yeah, that's quite a desirable option, I believe. And it does sound quite good, um, though I can't really notice much of a difference between that and standard. Um, but yeah, overall, it's just been very practical, very cheap to maintain. Uh, it's very quick, it's very good looking. And uh, I like the fact that it doesn't really get any attention, um, apart from, from those in the know. As I say, inside, driver's seat is it's just so comfortable. Um, all this is quite well laid out. Um, I love all the gauge cluster, I love all the controls. Steering wheel's quite nice. Um, the only thing that feels really quite cheap is this lower here. Um, that feels rubbish and plasticky. There's probably a lot of other plastic in the car, but that, you do feel it. Um, what I'll do is I'll open the bonnet. The pedal placement is really good for heel and toe as well, which is unusual for something based on a Vauxhall Vectra. Um, let's just open this up. Uh, where's the, con there we go. Right. So in here is the B207R turbocharged four cylinder engine, uh, also known for the, Vol the Vauxhall people as the Z20 Net. Um, but yeah, this thing is quite good actually. Uh, it's fairly economical. I get about 40 to the gallon. And in this guy's with the Noob Tune kit on it, or the Noob Tune tune on it, um, it's 250 brake horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. If this was standard, it's 210 brake horsepower and maybe 380 newton meters, but I'm not too sure. Um, also, thing to note the ecus get quite hot on these because they are right by the intake manifold um so i've bought a spacer kit from carl at noob tune who is the guy who tuned it um so it's probably worth doing that if you're going to keep one but yeah it does feel like more than that to be honest um let's shut this up there we go yeah i've had no problems engine wise um it's been pretty fantastic i've had no problems with anything but the clutch and now that's been done i, I really do love this car so uh and it does look fantastic doesn't it but yeah, anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load it up. I might as well open the boot now. Load it up with all my stuff that's got to go home. Um, and then you will join me out on the road and we can discuss how it drives and what it's been like. Perfect. And then... Suitcase in. box in and then i've got space for something else as well so yeah let's get this final little bit loaded and then you'll join me out on the road
So we're out on the road in the Saab and what's this thing been like to daily drive for the past few months? It's been fantastic, it's probably one of the best daily drives I've ever had, even if for cost, for nothing else. I mean, this was £1,400, I've spent £1,400 on it, so you're looking at just under £3,000 that I'm all into this car. It's fantastic, I don't know what else at that cost could do what this does. And it all feels very solid, it's all well put together, it's quiet, it's refined, it's fast, it's good on fuel. I'm averaging about 39.2 miles per gallon with my use. Um, if you use it around town, you'll probably see 32, 33. Um, so it'll obviously drop a little bit as it's a big turbocharged four cylinder car. Um, so they all do, don't they? But yeah, I mean, I'd say so far, it's been great and the fuel economy has been exactly what I anticipated it to be. Um, and it is very fast. What I'll do is I'll slow down of second gear. Okay, roll on from 25 miles an hour, foot flat. So, so it really, really gets up speed very quickly. Um, I believe it's boost restricted in first and second gear, which would make sense because it doesn't hit too hard in second. Um, but if I drop it back down to third, that's when it's... So if I put my foot down now, the roll-on boost is incredible. second but then there's an explosion of torque in third um, the pedals interestingly are quite well quite well placed for heel and toe um, and every now and again you get the uh, blow off valve the choo noise so yeah lovely pedal placement the steering's quite nice um, it's nicer at higher speed uh, it starts to feel a little bit um, unlinear at lower speeds okay so, coming under the underpass now, just put the window down, just change it to second gear, ready? It does sound quite good, it's very old school, um, the power delivery does come in one big surge, though Interestingly, I would have thought the tune would have exposed the big turbo characteristics and made it feel quite laggy, but actually it doesn't. There's still a big surge, don't get me wrong, but it's not peaky whatsoever, which is fantastic, um, because it's not what you want in a daily driver. Perhaps in an Evo or something you're gonna use on weekends it might be. Um, but, right, so second gear. Down. There we go. See, it, as soon as you change it to third, I'm going to slow down. Um, as soon as you change it to third, it's a different world. Um, it's properly, properly quick. Um, I'd probably say remapped 330D kind of quick. Um, it, this would take on a 330i in my opinion quite easily um, mainly because the torque is more usable you don't have to rev it all the way out to access it um, the only problem is when you are going for it like that the flywheel can't mask its weight and so actually you end up it's not very nice you end up dragging revs which i don't really like so yeah it deals with 0 to 60 in about six and a half seconds um, and it feels every bit of it, to be honest. Uh, the tune, interestingly, is done by Carl at Nubertune, who is, it's an off-the-shelf map that he does for them. They're only about £100, I think. Um, but usually, when it's an off-the-shelf tune, it can feel quite peaky, um, and the results just aren't very nice, as opposed to a bespoke tune. Um, but this guy obviously knows what he's doing, um, and this feels excellent. I've had no issues with it. Um, so, yeah, that's fantastic because usually when you buy tuned cars, you run into a load of issues, and this I've had, I've had absolutely none. 
I suppose he's not really pushing the envelope as much as he could, but in reality, would you want to? You've already had a boost of 40 horsepower from 100 pound and a lot of torque, so you know, you can push these to about 320 brake horsepower before you start encountering uh, issues, um, expensive issues. Um, obviously, you've got to do the clutch, you've got to do an intercooler, things like that. It's a fantastic cruiser, uh, it rides quite well to say it's on. 18 inch wheels with elastic band tyres. Um, as I say, if I'm going to keep it, I want to go to 17 because I think it'll ride slightly better. Um, but it does ride well, and plus, it's all absorbed by these lovely seats anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you rode like a Caterham. It's just, it's nice to have something that works, doesn't cost a fortune to run, it's comfortable, you can cruise in it, it's good on fuel, it's understated. But there's nothing I don't like about this car. Okay, I'd prefer it if it was rear wheel drive. Maybe if it had a nice silky smooth six cylinder turbocharged engine, but. Oh. I don't know what that. I don't know what that noise is. I, I think it's a jigsaw or something. Is it a jigsaw? I don't know what that, the kind of roadside thing that goes like that is. Um, I thought it was the timing chain on this. That's one thing I am going to get done if I keep it. I'm going to get the timing chain done. I think it's been done, but there's no receipts. Um, and it doesn't really make any... Oh, looks... Just stalled. So admittedly, it is a bit of a blunt package. The brakes aren't the best, they're not bad. The steering isn't very sharp, the chassis isn't very playful, but it's very quick, it's very practical, it's very comfortable and it's fairly economical. And that's all I need for a daily driver at the moment. As I said, because I'm getting rid of the unit or I'm moving out of the unit, sorry, um, I might have to repurpose a few of my other cars that I have more of a sentimental attachment to and maybe sell this. Um, but I know one thing, if I do sell it, whoever gets it is going to be very, very happy because this thing will just do this job for years to come. Um, and they are going up in value as well, which is annoying. You kind of get the feeling driving around in this that you're driving around in something that ultimately isn't going to be around much longer. And when I say that, I mean, there are a lot of cheap 9.3s now that are being run to the ground, and the nice ones, there's not a load of them surviving. And the ones that are are starting to become quite expensive. There's a very cool feeling driving around in this because you are driving around in a, in a company that died ultimately. You know, you're driving around in something that isn't around anymore. You're driving around in a piece of history, is what I'm trying to say. And okay, ultimately this might not be a true Saab to some people, but I think there's just about enough madness there to qualify it as a real Saab in my opinion. Or at least the Saab brand went out kicking. And I quite like that. It's very cool. absolutely fantastic. I mean, my seating position is excellent, head wheel position is fantastic, steering wheel's a perfect distance away from me, it's high to reach adjustable as well. Uh, the gearbox is, it's not cheap and quite heavy, um, it's not the nicest of gearboxes. With that said, you know you're in every gear with every gear change, um, there's no confusion as to when you enter sixth gear or fifth gear or whatnot. Um, it is heavy, but it's very positive, the gear changes. I genuinely can't see any reason why these wouldn't be future modern classics. It's an interesting brand, high performance, they're nice to drive, reliable, cheap. And there's not a load of them out there. So, yeah, it's interesting, but... I seem to think they're going to go up in value, so if I were you, I'd get looking on Facebook Marketplace and try and find these whilst they're £1,500, because some of the nice ones are getting quite expensive. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Obviously, now I'm moving out of the unit, I'm going to have to reformat the channel and how I do the videos, but at least I will actually have the time to do the videos. I'm going to try and get one out a week, there's going to be a mix of stuff. Uh, some car reviews, some stuff that I bought, some barn finds, some car collections. Um, 
there's going to be a lot uh, and I'm going to get one a week out because I will actually have the time to do so, providing that the content is there ready for me. Um, so yeah, just let me know what you want to see though and uh, I'll try and make it happen. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.